Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is episode 6 of How to Survive EVE Online. Let's get started on the advanced military chain. So I'm going to talk to the agent. The swap. Uh, clear the area of any hostile vessels. Very straightforward. Uh, double check my Atron's fitting. Uh, yeah, fit with weapons. I think I've got a salvager on there, but I may not use it too much in the field. Micro warp drive, armor repairer. Uh, wasn't I given. Yeah, here we go. Civilian damage control. May as well. May as well throw that on there. There we go. Um. No, we're not going to put a shield resistance module on our armor tanking ship. Uh, double check my ammunition supply. You know what? I'm going to right click, view market details. There's usually somebody uh, selling the type of ammunition you're going to use for your weapons in your solar system in the tutorial hubs at any rate. Uh, just make sure you're buying it in an, from an entry that says station. That's where you want to right click and buy this. Uh, where did it go? There we go. Right click. The swap. Encounter dead space. Warp to location. Warp drive active. Alright, I noticed that this context menu uh, is getting rather long, which I'll fix in a moment. Warp Probably right after active. this mission. Control left click. What's the range of my weapons again? About 12 kilometers. You know what? I might be able to hit him from here. Wait a minute, why did I not... Alright, there we go. Yes, one again. <clears throat> Save this location. At one, there we go. Uh, green check mark. Return to station. Warp drive active. And reload your guns. All right. So, right-clicking in empty space, you can see in system all of the various locations that you've saved already. It's starting to get to be a long list. So I'm going to open up People in Places. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, people in Places, the Places tab. I'm going to click the Create Folder button. Uh, save spot. Docking permission requested. Press Docking Return. Request accepted. Yeah, there's... There's the folder right there. Uh, I'm going to sort... I'm going to click on the Label header. Uh, left click here, shift left click here, scroll back up again with the mouse wheel, left click and drag. There we go. I'll put my rec up here as well. And you know what? Let me create another folder. Old exploration sites. All right, left click here, shift left click here, left click and drag. There we go. There. I'll show you the effect that has on the in space context menu. Complete the mission. Request the next mission. Fly the frigate your agent gave you into the pirate base. Once the explosive charges inside have been set off, your assignment will be complete. They will give you a new ship for this purpose. Click accept. Now, any ship that can get through the acceleration gate can be used, but expect the ship to explode. So, let's not use 
that one. Let's use wait, crit, click a simple ship. I'll drag that one in. Right click, change the name. I'll call it Boom. That way I'm not getting it confused with my other Atron. And I don't advise actually fitting anything to the ship. Uh, maybe a civilian afterburner. Yeah, just one of the civilian afterburners, because this thing is going to go boom. Uh, let's see. Oh, right click, ensure. Click yes. Platinum, ensure. You always want to ensure your ship if you know for certain it is going to be destroyed in the next 12 weeks. I forgot to mention, I believe it's been about a day. Look at how much shorter that context menu is. It's been about a day since I filmed the previous episode. For the record, today is Thursday, February the 2nd, 2018. History, that's what I want. So here's a history. If you want to stop the video and look at this, this is just the history of skills that I've trained uh, since I started this character. All right. There's an acceleration gate activated. Warp drive active. All you need to do for this mission is fly into that station. Double left click. Might as well turn on the civilian afterburner. Save this as a location. Now this is a special, uh, a specially scripted mission. Things don't normally explode when you bump into them. No, you don't actually have explosive charges on your ship. Uh, CCP game designers merely wrote uh, special scripts for this mission such that once you come within a certain range, uh, Everything explodes. By the way, you're going to want to go to the Warp 2 tab. This is not the new player experience. You're not required to get pod killed. But um, just as a good habit, I'm going to have you warp your pod out anyway, which is why I created a location first. All right. Warp 2. Warp drive active. If you are fast enough to bookmark the wreck directly, do so, but you might not be able to. The CCP conveniently provides you with a Warp 2 tab, right? What some players will also refer to as a Pod Saver tab. So you'll want to have that up and ready, and you, what I did was I clicked on a planet, and then I clicked on Warp 2. Be careful if it's a planet, because if you click on View in Planet Mode, that's drastically going to slow you down as um, that's going to bring you into the planetary interaction interface, which is not what you want to do when you are trying to run to Let's save your pod. Active. So yes, my ship was destroyed, my pod was ejected from the ship. Now granted, you are an immortal capsuleer, so even if your pod is destroyed, you'll wake up in a new medical clone. But um, later on, you're probably going to find things called implants, and you're probably going to plug in those implants into your head, and if your pod is destroyed, you requested. lose those implants, just so that you're aware. Now, after this episode is over, I intend to go back and salvage those wrecks and recover whatever can be recovered. 
but I'm not going to do that on screen. I've got a couple of hours. Uh, complete mission. Request the next mission. Find the fleeing pirate. Activate your civilian warp disruptor. Preventing escape. You are not authorized to kill any escort. Oh, I'm sorry. You are authorized to kill any escort vessels that you see, but not the primary target. Quick accept. Close. Back in my Atron. Uh, civilian warp disruptor. Power. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to do any salvaging work. Let me drop that. There. Now I can online this. Uh, if you tend to get annoyed by how little power grid or CPU you have, you will probably want to go to the, engin the engineering section. Um, you can slot in power grid management or CPU management, but you started off with those at level 4. To get those up another level will take over a week. So probably not right now. Your undivided attention, warp to location. If by any chance you happen to have a real Warp Disruptor, a Warp Disruptor 1, or rather a Warp Disruptor I, technically speaking, uh, that will also work. Alright, the Serpentis Rookie. I'm only going to target lock the Serpentis Rookies, so I will actually kill the Escorts. Uh, I'm going to pulse the Micro Warp Drive once. Control space bar. I'm not going to shoot the Fleeing Pirate yet. Uh, I'm not going to shoot the Fleeing Pirate at all, so I'm not going to target lock him yet. Target lock the pirate. Turn on the warp disruptor. There. Aid complete. Save location. Warp out. Warp drive active. requested. Docking request accepted. Alright. Talk to the agent. Complete the mission. Request the next mission. Uh, find a missing agent and repair his vessel. And they will give you a civilian small remote armor repairer. This, but this. Insufficient power. You know what? I'm not expecting a fight. There. May as well online the gun. Offline the guns. Uh, undock. Control left click. Uh, there we go. Basic systems are operational once again. You have functional warp drives. Thank you, pilot. You want them getting out of here. Uh, control B. Save as a safe spot. Return to station. Warp drive active. 
Now, the purpose of that mission is to introduce you to the concept of assistance modules. Uh, so there are modules you can target at other entities to help them. Usually this will apply to, in the future, this will generally apply to other players, uh, friends of yours typically. Or, depending on what sorts of shenanigans you get up to, players that you have temporary agreements with. Now, this is not uh, elite dangerous. The basic functionality of your ship is not actually affected by damage until your ship actually explodes. Right. So, as far as your hit points... Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll take that back. There, There is the issue with thermodynamics, but that's that's heat damage on your modules. That's something you, you do to yourself. Nobody else can inflict heat damage on you. Uh... They, nobody else can force your modules to burn out. So uh, thermodynamics and overheating is something you do to yourself. But uh, for what other things will do to your ship, uh, it's just taking off your shield hit points, armor hit points, and structure hit points. So a lot of that was just simply flavor text. Yeah, a lot of that was just simply flavor text. So you can't offline somebody's warp drive just by doing damage to them. If you want to prevent somebody from warping away, you need something like a, a warp disruptor or a warp scrambler. And an armor repairer is not actually going to have anything whatsoever to do with the warp drive directly. So... For this next mission, uh, again, they're going to give you a ship. They're going to expect it to explode. Make a stand to the pirate base, destroy at least one ship, and survive for as long as you can against the reinforcements that come. All right. Click accept. Close. This is an incursus, so assemble the ship. Uh, let me make this active. And let me take a quick look at it. Uh, three turret hard points. If you want to compare the differences between ships, one thing you can always do is go to the Neocom menu, compare tool, left click and drag the corners to make it a big window, and you can drag in the Incursus and the Atron. Uh, and it's going to compare the baseline statistics for each of these things. Uh, so you can look at the cargo capacity, Hold on, let me make this column a little bigger. Look at maximum targeting range, maximum velocity, so the incursus is going to be a little slower. How many slots do you have? How many uh, hard points, CPU, power grid, and so on. You can only turn up on up to 10 checkboxes. Uh, but this will allow you to compare uh, different item types side by side. So the Incursus has an extra low slot, one less high slot, but it's still got three turret hard points. And it's got more power grid and less CPU to work with than the Atron. So to see about fitting this thing, if you have a plain old, if you have an afterburner, throw that on. Uh, I am expecting this ship to explode, so I want to minimize how much stuff I'm putting on here. I guess I'll throw on the 75mm Gatling rails that I happen to have lying around. Um, shift, left, click, and drag. Shift, left, click, and drag. Let me shift, right click, and open cargo hold. Shift, left, click, and drag. I'll take over, I'll take 200 rounds. Yeah, that doesn't get anywhere near fully load the guns, but I'm probably not going to get all that many shots off anyway. That's good enough. Right click. Uh, ensure. Yes. Platinum. And uh, right click, change name, boom, undock.
The advanced military chain only does this to you twice. This is the second of those times. Uh, the career funnels were introduced before the current version of the new player experience. Warp drive active. So at the time this mission was implemented, it was supposed to, it was an earlier attempt at getting new players used to the idea of losing their ship. There's an acceleration gate. Activate it. Warp drive active. All right. At first, it's just the one mercenary fighter. Control left click. Shoot him. And he's trying to get away from me. Control B, my wreck again, press return. All right, I'm going to try to shoot something over there. But uh, given that I'm being webified, uh, I don't think I'm going to make it out of this or kill any of them. So I'm going to click Customs Office. When you hear that boo, that's when you want to warp out. Now it's on the warp button. Click, 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 click. Active. All right. It probably happened very fast for you to notice, but the overview entry wreck of boom used a hollow box icon instead of a filled box icon. So that, prob that means nothing survived in the wreckage. None of the ammunition, none of the modules. It's just Warp the wreck itself. Active. So unlike last time, where in the new player experience, where I actually found things surviving in the wreck, I don't think anything survived in the wreck this time. Which is unlikely, given that each module and each stack of ammunition and each stack of stuff in the cargo hold flips its own coin to determine whether or not it survives, but man, sometimes that happens. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Talk to the agent. Complete the mission. Press the next mission. Uh, use your afterburner to travel quickly through the electromagnetic disturbance to the asteroid colony. Click accept. Close. Get back in your Atron. Yeah, who needs afterburners when you've got a micro warp drive? In retrospect, I probably should not have transferred 200 rounds. I probably should have transferred 60 rounds, or maybe even 30. But anyway. But yeah, this next mission is just go through the acceleration gate, then run on over to an asteroid base some number of kilometers away. Head to that as quickly as you can. The area surrounding it will be dangerous, but once you make it to the station itself, you will be safe. You, will, If you're using a civilian afterburner, still, then you will just barely make it before your ship explodes. So approach. With a real afterburner, you'll have time to spare, 
And with a micro warp drive, easy. All right, good work. You're done. Report back to me. Complete the mission. Request the next mission. Uh, you will be given civilian hobgoblins. Use those to destroy the pirate. And this is called weapon of choice. Uh, for Galente, it'll be Jones. For the other races, I believe it'll be something different. So open your fitting window. Uh, there is no drone bay on this. Uh, I'll have to. I believe the Tristan will have one. You were given a Tristan by one of the other tutorial chains. All right. So I have a Tristan. Do I have a spare micro warp drive lying around? All right, let me throw... You can throw the drones into the drone bay either by opening this button right here or just drag onto the circular disc. That also works. All right, click. Now, these are civilian hobgoblins. They're weaker than regular hobgoblins, but they only require the drone skill. Uh, I guess they don't give you the light drone skill uh, operation skill book. I'm getting a micro warp drive. Ah, yes, five MN. All right, so. Starting off, you'll want to look for just the least expensive micro-warp drives. Sometimes there are micro-warp drives on the market less expensive than your basic Tech 1. All right, because the basic Tech 1 can be manufactured by players or occurs loot drops. The, some of these others only occur as loot drops, and they're pretty common. So I'm going to buy this one. Throw that on there. And you know what? Just in case I need a backup weapon. Here we go. 125mm Railgun 1. Right click, buy three of these. Antimatter Charge S. Better another, buy another 500. But I'll try to use the drones. Oh, I only have two turret hard points. Yeah, all right, makes sense. Uh, I'll leave the extra ammunition here in station. I probably don't need it. Good enough. Undock. Now, you were given a new drones window, which, personally, I like to drag over here. Uh, drones in bay, and you can also expand drones in local space. Uh, so, what you can do here... Left-click and drag this out into the field. That tells them to launch. Uh, control, left-click the Corelli Initiate. Now right-click drones in local space, engage target. And that tells your drones to go run over there and shoot that thing. Drones are effectively flying turrets, so they obey all the same game mechanics that turrets do in regards to angular velocity, optimal and fall-off ranges, tracking speeds, signature radii, so on and so forth. Right-click, return to drone bay. 
And you can set key bindings for this. Uh, shortcuts. Drones. Here we go. So all drones engage is F. Return in orbit is Shift Alt R, and return to drone bay is Shift R. Uh, but you can change these uh, key bindings if you like. Loot the wreck. Uh, save this location. No, hold on. I want this to be named a wreck. There we go. And return to station. Warp drive active. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Talk to the agent. Turn in the mission. Request next mission. Yeah, so... If you want to use real drones, mutual market, drones, combat drones, light scout drones, any of pick any of these, um, but you need the skill light drone operation, which apparently uh, the tutorials do not give you and you do not currently have. So right click the light drone operation, view market details. <laughs> Right click by this. I should have double checked this in advance. My apologies. Uh, but yeah, get light drone operation. Right click, train that now to level one. Yes, switch your skill training. Um, and just for my own part, what I'm going to do. Where is the drone scout? There it is. Um. I already have drones level 3. You know what? I'll throw in drone avionics 2 and light drone operation 2. There we go. Drones level 4 will take a while. So I'm not going to rely on that for now. Uh, follow the instructions from the Concord Fleet Commander and bring the hostage situation to an end. Let me click accept. Close. I want to get back into my Atron for this. Double check my fitting. Alright, looks good. Uh, undock. If you want, you can switch to an afterburner. Uh, just drag the micro warp drive out, put the afterburner in. The pacifist. Warp to location. Warp drive active. Don't shoot anything on this mission. Alright. You're a little far from the gate. Approach the gate. I've ordered the fleet to hold its ground for the time being, but we're going to send you in to recover the hostages shortly. Move out to the next area where the pirates are. They're expecting a negotiator, but we're sending you instead. You are not to engage unless I give the order. We need to maintain the appearance of peaceful negotiation until the safety of hostages can be confirmed. Warp drive active. You know, I'll disengage, disengage the music for this. So left click the prison facility, twiddle your thumbs and wait. You can turn on your micro warp drive and just sit there. It makes you a much bigger target, and I don't advise doing that under normal circumstances. If you're just waiting around somewhere, at least be orbiting something. If you're a cruiser or smaller, that includes frigates. Uh, da, 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 da. Go, 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 go. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the micro warp drive. Be ready with the loot all button very, very quickly. Loot all and warp out. Warp drive active. I'm going to save this as a safe spot. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right. Talk to the agent. 
complete the mission. Request the next mission. Glue. Use the civilian stasis weapon fire to corner the pirate and then interrogate him. Uh, and if you happen to have a real stasis weapon fire, you can use that instead. Uh, yeah, stasis weapon fire one. You can use the civilian one, or you can real use a real one. Either will work. Undock. Drive active. All right, he says, "Get out of here, Edgar," which is a derogatory term for a capsuleer. Uh, turn on the micro warp drive. Approach uh, as soon as you can. Target lock. You want to target lock. Control space bar. You don't want to overshoot. Uh, you know what? I'm going to turn off the micro warp drive, get a little bit closer. Alright, I'm standing down. I'll cooperate. Just let me live. And return to station. Warp drive active. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in mining, there is Scordite here. But you'll, again, you'll want to stand down. Pilot, good work. Report back to me. You know what, I don't remember if there's a possibility of getting blown up if you go back in there, uh, but if you want to try it, make sure you ensure your venture first, just in case. Getting a couple of replacement miners and a replacement mining laser upgrade shouldn't be terribly expensive. Docking request accepted. But if you're going to try mining, you have to get in your venture now, and undock immediately, and go back out to the mission site. Uh, as usual, talking to the agent and turning in the mission. Now it's complete. Those asteroids don't exist anymore. And final step, uh, kill the terrorist leader inside the pleasure hub. Alright. So, accept. And close. And they give you something called a catalyst for this. So, let's actually make use of it. Uh, now, previously, I did, after training Galente Frigate level 3, I also trained Galente Destroyer, at least to level 1. Uh, let me double check. Uh, yeah. So I did train Galente Destroyer myself um, all the way up to level 3, but just level 1 will suffice to actually get in the ship. Uh, yeah. There we go. So since I did take the time beforehand, uh, I can do that. So right-click, uh, strip fitting, clears everything out, right-click, assemble ship, right-click, change name, catalyst, drag in the catalyst, uh, right-click my item hanger, stack all. Now, I've got eight turret hardpoints and eight heights high slots, so I can put a lot of weaponry on this. Question is, do I have enough power grid to support everything? You know what? Let me fit all the other things I'm going to need first. That'll give me a better idea. So here's my micro warp drive. Destroyers and frigates both use small size modules, so you still want a 5 meganewton micro warp drive or a 1 meganewton afterburner. Uh, it'll be cruisers that start using the 50 meganewton micro warp drives and 10 meganewton afterburners. Throw on the small armor pairer, throw on damage control. Um, I now have 62 megawatts of power grid. So 62 divided by 8 is a little bit under 8. So I don't want to try to use the 150 millimeter railgun. You know what? I'll just get more 125 millimeters. That'll be fine. So I already have three. I need another five.
And of course, shift, left, click, and drag everything. Uh, right click, shift, hold down shift, open cargo hold. Let me drag out the antimatter charges. Close this double left click in the background. Um, I will drag in the antimatter charges I have. And I may want to try to engage from long range. Let me view market details on the lead charges. Because there are other kinds... Find group and browse tab. There are other kinds of charges available. Um, lead charges are medium range, medium damage. Uh, whereas iron charges are uh, long range and low damage. So I'm going to get a mix of each. I won't... I'll probably switch between them. So a thousand lead charges. And... A thousand iron charges. Because, again, with the antimatters... Uh, I can hit targets out to 14 kilometers. This is going to be a mission that will actually involve NPCs that are warp scrambling or warp disrupting you so that you cannot uh, get away. Uh, so if I use the LEDs, I can reach out further. Or if I use the irons, uh, I can reach out uh, and hit things up to 30 kilometers away. So I'll start off with this and see how well uh, I can apply damage with this. So I'm going to undock. Now warp disruptors and warp scramblers uh, do have a, a finite range. Warp drive active. So if I hit them from outside that range, then if things are starting to go really badly, I can escape at any time. Scanners are picking up three hostiles moving into their ships now. Looks like they've noticed you. Good luck. Uh, now I can right-click the keep at range and set a new default distance. I'll set 25,000 meters. I'll set 25,000 meter meters from the nearest one and open fire. And even with just the irons, the longest range but low damage, I'm able to rip into the mercenary trainings. Click next one, keep at range, F1 to open fire. That shift, keep in mind, that shift left click and drag I was doing, let's shift left click and drag one turret onto the next, onto the previous turret, that's to group them, so I only need to press one button to fire all of them. Finally, the terrorist leader. Now, if I turn off the guns and control spacebar, and let me switch to antimatter charges. Let me start approaching him. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's the mercenary trainees who did the warp disrupting or warp scrambling effects. Because I'm not seeing anything from this guy. Oh, no, wait, there it is. Warp disrupted. So I can't use my warp drive right now. But if I destroy him, now I can. And that completes the mission. Uh, let me right-click. Uh, save the wreck as a location. I'm going to loot the wreck just to see what's here. Pulse the micro warp drive. Stop my ship. Because I can really overshoot. 
All right. Just metal scraps. Warp drive active. All right, and return to station. So that completes the advanced military chain. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. And that completes the career path hub. All right. Uh, the only other... Yeah, let me talk to the agent here real quick. Uh, and close. All right. Now I am going to refit this ship uh, to do salvaging work. So I'm going to right, right click strip fitting. Skill training completed. Now you'll recall when I did the salvaging with the Atron, uh, I was running around all over the place uh, trying to get within range of each of the wrecks. Um, let's see, how much is small tractor beams? Expensive. Okay. Um, if you want, you can spend a bit of money to get a couple of tractor beams. Uh, although granted, in my with this character, I've only got about 9.8 million, so spending another 2.6 million is a little bit steep, but let me demonstrate this. So you can get a couple of tractor beams fit them on like this, get, some, get your salvagers, put them on here, and since uh, you might consider getting an expanded cargo hold, but that's entirely up to you, uh, I'm going to undock. So you'll find that tractor beams, when you can afford them, uh, will make the salvaging work a lot easier. And the way they work is as follows. I'm going to right-click, go to any of these wreck bookmarks. I skipped ahead to where I realized that the terrorist leader wreck makes a better example of this. Um, so I can control left-click each of the wrecks. Uh, let, me, uh, let me select the most distant one and approach. I can target any one of these wrecks, and if it's within 20 kilometers, activate a tractor beam, and that pulls in the wreck. Control spacebar. Uh, and these tractor beams can pull in wrecks at 500 meters a second, up to 20 kilometers away. So this makes uh, salvaging wrecks a lot easier. That way you don't have to run around quite as much. All right. But that's entirely optional. Uh, as you've noticed, the tractor beams are a little bit pricey. They're about 1.3 million interstellar credits each. Uh, back in the day before I used a specialized ship called Noctis, or even before the Noctis existed, uh, I used to use a Catalyst class Galente Destroyer for salvaging work. Uh, and four tractor beams, four salvagers was definitely very helpful in that regard. Um, so that'll probably be your next step up from just using an Atron to salvage. So that concludes uh, the career agent hub. Uh, in the next episode, I'm going to give you uh, some parting comments and thoughts in case you don't uh, watch any further. Uh, but I will also discuss Don't any preparations that I'm going to make with this character for when I move on to the level 1 Sisters of Eve epic arc, the Bloodstained Stars, which would probably be your own next step in EVE Online after the tutorial hubs. In the meantime, uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>